Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. John? Uh, I've got a question. It is about a hand, but it's more about, um, you know, image at the table. And okay. uh, a, guy that, a guy that was donk leading a lot, but this hand plays into it. Okay. Um, two, three, it's a spread limit, but I only have 300, which is a max bet. So it's effectively a, um, <clears throat> you know, it's effectively no limit for this hand. Okay. Uh, I am in the cutoff the guy under the gun went, I looked down at pocket Kings and I raised a uh, black pocket King and I raised a 20. So it's 300 effective. Yes. And what's the max bet? Just so that I. 300, so it's effectively okay. no limit for this. So, so two limps and you look down at kings from the cutoff, is that right? Correct. Okay. I make it 20, and I kind of, generally that's a big bet for the table, but I'm generally when I play, I play during the week because of my work schedule, and mm -hmm. I'm the youngest guy by usually 20 years. Okay. So everyone thinks that I'm, you know, the crazy aggressive young kid, even though I'm in my early 30s. Okay. So I kind of, I guess my question here, well, part of the hand is, when your table image doesn't really match how you actually play, I guess, how do you deal with that? You know, if it's a real, real passive table, I'll be the aggressive guy, but usually there's enough aggressors that I play more like a tag, tight aggressive. Well, I mean, so if, if, if people thought you were a maniac, then you just want to value bet them to death and probably bluff a little bit less. So if you're saying that you upped your raise size because you had a value hand here and you think people wouldn't believe you, that's a fine adjustment. Right, and that's usually what I do. I start the day, you know, it'll be 12 to 15 on my raises, and then after a couple hours where, you know, the 70-year-old guy's getting one caller and I'm getting four, yeah, I'm bumping it up because I'm getting two, three callers every time. Sure, I mean, I would just take whatever you usually open and then add a big blind per limper. So if you were, open, you know, if you were making it 15 and there's two limpers, you might make it 21 or something like that. But 20 is fine, so you make it 20. Right, uh, blinds fold, under the gun call, guy in the middle calls. Okay. Um, flop comes, and I have two black kings. Okay. So uh, flop comes, six spades, four of spades, three of spades. So six, six of spades. Six, four, three, all spades. Okay. Six, four, three, all spades. Okay. And the guy in uh, early position, the under the gun, he donk leads up for 30. And I guess this is where I have a question because he'd been doing this a lot and everyone at the table was, you know, kind of something that I've been seeing more. And I guess what's your take on the guy who donk leads a lot? So the guy in the middle folds? He did, yes. I mean... He kind of looked, he kind of looked at everyone like, because this guy had been doing it, he kind of gave this what's going on look because this guy was donk leading about half the hands he was in when he was first or second to act after the flop. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it usually sounds to me like this guy doesn't really have a balanced donk leading range. Even if you weren't really donking a lot here, it's just like you just don't see people donk like really strong hands here that much. When you have the king of spades in your hand, you've got this board pretty much on lockdown. Now, I don't, I mean, obviously there's two courses of going here. You could call, which would be what a lot of people think is the best play but I could actually see raising here small too to like 70 to 75 because if he's got like a high spade in his hand in some sort of pair like five six I'm trying to figure out like if he's got sevens or eights with a spade he's not going away and I feel like if you right. call here there's going to be a lot of checking to you on the turn now you're not all that deep but um, I could see making this like 70 like I don't see a guy donking for 30 and then folding to 70 but I can't imagine how you don't have the best hand and how are you possibly not going to go broke here um, against when you raise pre with black kings and somebody donks at you from under the gun who's donked other weird shit before so it, it's a it's a very very hard proposition to ever fold this hand unless something crazy happens so I would just be going for max value I might make it 70 or 75 and just go bet bet to be honest with you. Okay. Um, yeah, I ended up calling. Uh huh. Um, turn was a three, so it pairs the board. That's a really good card for you, unless he's got like ace three offsuit with the ace of spades or something like that. Right, and that's kind of what I thought. If he happened to have six four, or you know, if he had five seven, that gives me more outs. Um, he leads out for fifty. So this is where bet sizing comes into play here. So. You know, the pot's 60, he leads half pot, you call. Now he leads 50 on turn. 
again, this is just all very, very indicative to me of like a hand like eights or nines or something like that. And you're calling with two overs and a spade. Like I just, I don't see how you don't have the best hand. And again, if you ever listen to my Crush Live Poker podcast, this concept has come up quite a bit. I've talked about it. I've talked about it with nut hands. The, your hand's not a nut hand, but it's a strong hand that we think is best. A lot of people will take the approach, I'm going to call here and then with a nut hand, I'm going to call and then raise the river, but the bet's never really going to come. Now, of, of course, like I said, you don't really have a nut hand. So sometimes you might think, all right, this is a good spot for me just to call. And then when he checks the river, I'm going to bet. So if you didn't raise the flop here and he bets 50 on turn, I could see making it 100 or 110. I could also see calling, but you're going to have to bomb the river to make up for your lost value. In this game, I just want to max, max, max my value all the time. Um, so, I mean, if you call, you're left with about two. If you call here, you're left with about 200. Now, if you make right. it 100, you're left with 150, and you might be able to get all the money in. So, Right, and that's, you know, I wasn't really thinking that at the time. I was more thinking that this guy just really confused me with his donk lead, mm -hmm. and he hadn't really shown a lot of hands when he was doing that. He was getting a lot of people sold and winning it, so I wasn't really sure exactly where he was. So I was in kind of shrug call mode. So, which probably isn't the best thing now that, you know, what you're saying makes a lot of sense. But I called, um, turn is like river? an offsuit 10 or something. River? Or, yeah, river is an offsuit 10 or whatever, something, unless he had pocket 10s, was was a useless card. So, let me guess. This is You're going to get a block bet here on the river, or he's going to check, I think. Just just like yeah. I said, my experience at these levels, because he just doesn't have a hand all, that's all that strong, um, given this line you're going to face like a bet probably of the same size or less than the turn bet, or he's going to check. I, that's my prediction, but what, what happened? Actually, neither. Um, he grabbed a stack that was bigger than 20, like 20 chips. It was like 125 or 130. Mm -hmm. Just one of those quick grab and shove out there, like as soon as the, as soon as the river hit. He bet 130? Something like that, 120, 130. I don't remember the amount. And you've got what? Like, um, And you have what, 200 left in your stack, something like that? Right. Right. It's probably just a call here. So yeah, that's, if he, yeah. if it just goes like large bet at the end, it's probably just going to be a call because it's going to be a spot where he's going to either have like naked ace of spades or he did lead with a strong hand. But that's not the type of sizing that I'm going to just make a super thin value raise with here. Even when you only have 80 left, I think calling is better. I think he's probably polarized here. Now, maybe he weirdly is going to show up with eights with the eight of spades occasionally but i think a call here is just better so you called yeah that's what i did i called and he had ace of spades and a six so he flopped okay. top pair no flush draw yeah that's a very strange bet on the river by him and again i mean that's basically the same thing as eights with the eight of spades right um you know you had probably only about a hundred back um but I still think that probably calling there is going to be best because you're just not going to face that type of, of, of bet. So if he had checked the river, what would you have done? Um, I would have led. Um, with what I had, I probably would have led somewhere in that 120-ish range, I think, just to right. because if he has a flush, he's going to try to get me in on it. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason he has pocket sixes, pocket fours, or you know weird pocket tens with the ten of spades and got there, yeah. then I'm just paying him off. But you can see here what where if I made the flop 70 – or also too, if I raise the turn to a hundred, you're you're gonna get now he's got top pair in the nut flush draw, so occasionally you might get jammed on on the flop, but I would have a very hard time folding um, once I make it seventy on the flop with kings with the king of spades. But notice the difference also too, if you raise the turn, you're not you're not gonna get jammed on. So occasionally, like if the guy bets a six with the ace of spades here on six four three all spades. If you if you if he make if if he goes thirty and you make it seventy five, occasionally a guy might just move in. Um, but if you wait till the turn, when the turn pairs with three and he bets 50 and you make it 100, uh, there's no way he's shoving. I don't think so. I think he's going to call, and then you leave yourself more money to get money in. I mean, that's that's sort of the way I look at it. So. That okay. makes sense. It was, he was kind of confusing everyone with his weird, you know, the weird betting pattern he was having. He was pretty much leading almost every flop if he was first or second. And no one was calling him down. So that's what, you know, any other player, I, I definitely would have probably raised, I would have raised that flop. But with him, I was... I just had no idea where it was because I'd never played with him before or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's interesting when you're playing against unknown players. 
but just in general, especially you, with what you said with your image where you're the young crazy guy, these old codgers aren't going to usually bet into you with like a, a made flush um, all that much. So, I mean, that's sort of... Do you think the donk lead is, is weaker? Sure. Than, than a... Absolutely. The donk lead there okay. on that board, given that action, is going to be pretty weak. I mean, not weak. It's a, it, They don't have air, but it's just not going to be like a nut hand. You know? Okay. All right. Thanks for the call. Hey, guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.